Hi everybody, I'm Lawrence Moroni. We're here at the TensorFlow Developer Summit at the TensorFlow Cafe. And it's my honor right now to meet with Pete Warden. And Pete is the tech lead for TensorFlow on mobile, which spans a whole lot of things, Pete. It must be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, there's so much interesting stuff that people are doing. So here now at the summit, we've been showing a lot of mobile stuff, including TF Lite. Yes, right, so. yes. So what's new and exciting in TF Lite? So over the last year, you know, TensorFlow on mobile, taking the whole of the TensorFlow framework and fitting it down to fit on mobile has been really useful for a lot of people. And we've done some, seen some really interesting applications that people have built. But what we've wanted to do is build something that's even smaller, even faster, <laughs> and even easier to use. So that's really what TF Lite is, uh, you know, its mission is to be that framework that people are looking for. We've been seeing some really cool stuff done on mobile, like the Cassava demo in the keynote. Yes, yes. I, I was, we were just chatting off camera earlier, and it was like, to me, it blew my mind in that it's very hard to convey you know, when we all have great connectivity that why do you need it to be isolated on a mobile? But that example, I mean, yeah. how did that work? So um, we actually have been working with Plant Village for, I think, up to a couple of years now. And we've been working with them because they had such interesting problems. Like they were trying to get stuff into people's hands who didn't have data connections. Right. And also, even if they had data connections, they wanted answers fast. So getting that interactivity and allowing people to actually move the camera around and focus it on the leaves and kind of get that instant feedback um, makes a massive difference for their application. And we've seen that across a whole bunch of applications. It's not just, oh, I don't have a data connection. It's like, oh, I need to work with video or audio. Ah, okay. And I need that instant interactivity that you can only get by running on device. That makes sense. And it, yeah, so you've got that speed, right? Because video might be a big upload to the cloud. Yes. Right? Even if you do have the connection. <laughs> I see where you're going. That's actually pretty cool. Now, and then beyond like mobile, like Android and iOS, now you have TF Lite or TensorFlow Lite coming on Raspberry Pi. Yes, We saw yes. a cool demo of that. Yes, right? and Andy has been doing amazing work with the Raspberry Pi and actually getting the speed that we've got on Android and iOS actually ported over to these wonderful sort of $25 devices. Um, and these things that you can put almost anywhere and do, um, I think we were talking earlier about Donkey Car. Yeah, yeah. Which is this fantastic example of using TensorFlow running on a Raspberry Pi to power a self-driving toy racing car. And if you've seen the videos, they're incredible how they yes. zip around the track. <laughs> it's like, you know, I actually bought one. I'm building it myself. I'm uh. convinced. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be like driving it at home, but we'll see. But an actual self-driving car, even though it's a toy, but, but yay big, but on a Raspberry Pi. Yes, yes. Okay, think about that. Think about the compute power of a Raspberry Pi, and now you can build a self-driving car, thanks to... You know. And the fact that this can be something that almost anybody can actually buy and build themselves now for just, you know, it's so much fun seeing this get into, you know, I have a lot of kids actually playing around with this stuff, a lot of high school students as well, building all of these crazy sort of, you know, trash sorters <laughs> using Raspberry Pis wow. and, <laughs> you know, all of these other like really, really interesting projects that you can only build if you have this cheap, almost disposable computer that you can play with. But when you can take a model that was typically only restricted to high-end, expensive yeah. supercomputers, nowadays with TensorFlow, you can train that on your desktop machine. It might take a little longer, but you can train it on your desktop machine. You can flatten it and you can deploy it quickly to an Android or an iOS or now a Raspberry Pi to take advantage. And yeah, one thing I would like to give a shout out to is actually TensorFlow for Poets, the yes. tutorial, which yes. doesn't require any coding. Yep. And we actually have uh, the ability to very easily get that onto iOS, Android, or the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So if you don't feel confident in coding at all, you can still create your own image model. You can just use TensorFlow for Poets, go through the code lab, and on a laptop with no GPU required, in half an hour, fingers crossed, you should yeah. have your own model. And, and if you're not familiar with that, what that does is it takes the last layer, and it's MNet it uses, right? For image classification? It's mobile net, yes. Mobile net, yeah. So yes. it takes the last layer of that, and then in the Poets Code Lab, you can replace the last layer of that. So instead of classifying general images, you train it on a bunch of flowers, and it recognizes those flowers. And 
like you said, codelessly you can do it. And we, we generally have it at conferences like Google I.O. And I think it was the most popular code lab at I.O. last year. So it's super cool. But back to Raspberry Pi for a second. So like, you know, the demo that we showed earlier on was like TensorFlow Lite running on a Raspberry Pi, yes. which was inference only. But people also want to be able to train on, on a, something like a Raspberry Pi. And yeah. How, how would that work? So the Raspberry Pi is this really interesting beast because it's half like a Linux desktop and it's half like a mobile phone. <laughs> so okay. when all you want to do is run inference, run a model that's already been trained, TensorFlow Lite is great for that. But if you actually want to use Python and you want to program and use the full programming environment of TensorFlow and do training of models, you can actually get binary pip installs oh. and just do a pip install. Um, there is a URL that you can find if you, uh, unfortunately, we don't have it up on the tensorflow.org website yet. We'll put a link in the but description. But we, uh, we will add a link that you can actually just do a pip install and get it on your um, Raspberry Pi in minutes. Because like, to be able to do that on a small embedded system, because there may be scenarios like we were talking about earlier where you don't want a route trip to the cloud. Yes. And especially doing things like personalization or modifying according to data that you don't want to leave the device, Right. that can be a really interesting application. So if I'm a developer and I want to get started and enjoying all this magic, other than the TensorFlow for Poets Code Lab, do you have any uh, recommendations <laughs> that I should follow? Oh, that's, that's a really good question. I would um, actually look through the examples that are in TensorFlow and TensorFlow uh, Lite. We actually have some demo applications that you should be able to get up and running pretty easily in Xcode or Android Studio and really play around with them um, and start to get ideas and learn to modify the code that's already there. It's so much easier to start with code that's already working yeah, rather than definitely. trying to build something from scratch. So I actually put the demo on my, this is my Pixel, and I, I put the Android demo on here, and I'm having fun going around and classifying. It's <laughs> really neat. And, and the speed is actually really good because I can point it, like for example, at a mug, and it's generally less than 100 milliseconds, and it will classify it. It's, uh, yeah. it's super. And that's in Java. That's not C++. And right. that's in Java. And with the neural network API coming up in Android, uh, yeah, Android P, well, we actually have a preview of it out already. Um, you should see even better performance, especially using the Qualcomm HVX. Uh, accelerator that's in your pixel. So. Nice, nice. I'll look out for it. Maybe I'll have to put a P preview on here just yes. to try it out. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Pete. That, it's been a blast. Having awesome. a lot of fun. So. Thanks, Lawrence. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and I've had Pete Wardern on the show. If you have any questions for me, or if you have any questions for Pete, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.